<clears throat> Hello everyone, Ben here, and uh, well, we're going to be talking a little bit about 2020 today. Um, I know, I've been working on my baseline predictions for 2020 through my Swing State series, um, and here's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be ending the series on state history because I realized that it was kind of... And number one, it wasn't exactly popular. Number two, um, I don't know. I just, I might get to it again eventually, but who knows. So, anyway. Um, and I kind of want to talk about who I think the, the best that Democrats can do in 2020. best they're going to be able to do is I honestly believe this and I have some reasons to believe this the best they can do is I'd say the Obama-Romney map. Actually, no. I don't even think they can do that. I'm actually going to be generous to Democrats and say they can pick up North Carolina. Um, but they're... I honestly believe that this is the best the Democrats can do in 2020. Um... They'll, of course, pick up... They can, of course, pick up that trifecta. But they're not going to be able to match... Uh, the Obama-Romney map. They're going to lose a few votes because they're going to lose Ohio and Iowa. I really do think those have mostly flipped the other direction. And that kind of depends on the candidate. Um, after looking at, you know where certain candidates are strong, they I have a firm belief that Sanders now would probably lose handedly in the South. Not just... Uh, uh, <clears throat> not just uh, in the North Carolina. I don't even think he, can hold Virgi he would be able to win Virginia. Um... Considering how heavily Virginia Democrats went for Clinton, um, Sanders was not as popular as a lot of people would think. And given the choice, you know, Virginia Democrats would prefer Clinton to lose the election than Sanders to win it. That should tell you something. I also think there would be a decent chance that maybe in either Colorado, Nevada, or New Mexico, that either in Colorado or New Nevada, it could go to the Republicans as well. I do think Sanders would do much better in the upper Midwest, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, but that's because that's where his strengths lie. So, His strengths lie in the upper Midwest, um, but it wouldn't be too hard to see uh, a situation like this um, if Sanders were to run. Uh, that said, that that would probably flip a little bit, you know. And if it's Biden, you're going to see. Uh, you're going to see something similar, except Biden's able to capture moderates a little bit better. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I still think Trump might would have the advantage over Biden, but I'm not positive how much of one. 
Um, I would consider races that I think are, would be much too close to call. Uh, would really just be Wisconsin and... Oops, that should be there. That should be there. You know, I think the race that would be too close to call would be Wisconsin, and Wisconsin would decide it. And I tend to favor the incumbent, so I'm going to award it to Trump, but, you know, I would consider this election a true toss-up if Biden were running. I would not consider Biden a favorite. Um, and here's the funny thing. I actually think a Southern Democrat would be a very poor... Ch no, depends on the Southern Democrat. North Carolina's governor, I'm going to give the state of North Carolina to him. Um, I won't give Florida to him. I'm not sure if he'd be able to pick up in the in the Rust Belt because they'd see it as, well, it's basically the same thing as Trump, so except more uh, more tame. So maybe you'd see something like this where North Carolina flips, you know, possible. And let's put you know 2016 map back up and. If you want with, say, John Bell Edwards, I don't even think he'd get North Carolina back. He would make Louisiana closer. I will say that much. I think it would be actually somewhat competitive. But I don't think he'd win it. Um, maybe he'd get Michigan back. Uh, most Democrats I'll probably give Michigan back to, so North Carolina's governor, I'm going to go ahead and say this might be a reasonable election map. Um for, what's the North Carolina governor's name? Y'all tell me in the comments, so, there we go. Um, let's say, hmm, let's go with Kamala Harris. Okay, she'll get Min uh, Michigan back, right? I'm skeptical about Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. For sure, she's not getting North Carolina, Georgia. I don't think she'd get Florida. Uh, the swing voters in those states are, well, they're very moderate. And I don't think they would go to someone as far left as Kamala Harris. Um, Virginia also does not like progressive candidates. Um, that much is pretty clear. You know, the conservatives don't, definitely don't like it, and the Democrats apparently don't like it either. Um, so I could actually see Trump improving in Virginia. Eh. I'll give them, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt in the Southwest, and but there is a possibility that these flip. Uh, back to Republicans again, but eh, probably not. Um, you know, there may be something up here in the Northeast that flips it to the Republicans as well, so that's not out of the question. Um, see, Nancy Pelosi would probably be the absolute worst choice the Democrats could ever run. I think she would somehow manage to lose every swing state. I, I honestly do. I think Nancy Pelosi would be worse than Clinton um, for the Democrats. And even winning every swing state does not help, you know, does not push the Republicans over 350. It only gets them to 350. Uh, I'm not really considering New Mexico that much of a swing state anymore. I'm including it just because it's vaguely competitive depending on the year. Um, but... Yeah, so let's say there's a hypoth. Let's say not only does Trump's popularity tank, I'm gonna put it in the. Let's say let's drop it down to 30 percent in the average of polls, and the highest will be 35, and that'd probably be Res uh, Rasmussen. Um, generally speaking, everybody else has him around 40 to 42 um, percent. Rasmussen constantly has him in the upper 40s and occasionally crossing 50. I really don't consider. Uh, I, I take Rasmussen with a grain, with a huge grain of salt. Um, so let's say Trump. Not only does Trump's popularity tank, but to that thirty percent, I think if he's at forty percent on on election day in twenty twenty, 
he's going to be reelected. I really do. Um, I think that's a reasonable target to reach. If he's above that, you know, it depends on how far above it, and that will kind of determine the margin. Um, now, depends on what comes of the whole, uh, to make a reference to the Brady Bunch, Russia, Russia, Russia thing. Um, seriously, that's all I can think of whenever I hear someone talk about Russia, is that is making a Brady Bunch reference. Um, as well as the other stuff that's going around, and we'll call them scandals, but let's say all of that works out in the Democrats' favor. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and give, you know, the states that went to Clinton in 2016. Let's flip that, and then we'll start talking about uh, red states going, uh, we'll start talking about red states going uh, blue. Which ones? So, sorry. Well, we can start with Michigan. I'd venture the next state that would flip would probably be Pennsylvania. Okay? And that puts Trump at 270. Now let's say the Democrats somehow find the absolute perfect candidate for 2020. Uh, just moderate enough to win over swing voters. Um, far enough to the left not to discourage your progressives, but not too far. Um, charismatic. And... Well, yeah, let's go with that. And reasonable, and not old. Okay, well, we can also give Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Florida. All these were the closest states. That's not up for debate. That already puts the Democrats at uh, 322. But let's go ahead and f I'll, we'll flip Iowa, not, well, actually, eh, yeah, we'll go ahead and give Democrats Iowa, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, I think that's a reasonable thing to do, can probably give them Arizona, because that was, what, 4%, Ohio, Georgia, I wouldn't give them, said Texas would be at least moderately competitive, um, this district might be, well, actually, I think this district could flip. Um, so you'd probably have something looking like this, where they just only barely beat Obama's uh, 2008 electoral vote total. Remember, he got 357. Um, that's just because Arizona gained a vote. <laughs> Um, and I believe a couple of states, yeah, I believe there's a net gain of one vote in this map. And of course, I'm flipping Arizona for Indiana. Um, so I honestly think this is probably the best Democrats could do in 2020. Anything else is just a little, I think it's just a little too far. Um, well, actually, I'm going to put Montana, North Dakota, at least moderately competitive. Um, go ahead and make Missouri somewhat competitive as well. And I, I'd even, I'll even give, make Indiana not super solid red. Um, and this is probably similar to what I would expect. Um, oh, Mississippi as well. There we go. So, here we go. This is the best, I think, uh, the best Democrats could do. Now, the best Trump could do in 2020 is, let's say it turns out all of this hoopla is just that, and it's hoopla. It's much ado about nothing. Well... There we go. Let's put, put 
North Carolina there. Let's put Virginia there. Florida would that would probably be solid, actually. Probably solid. Probably get that. Probably get that. And the tough question is, is he and I'm actually gonna put these within the ten percent. I put that there, that there, that there. I'm actually going to only lean Rhode Island because 538 did a very good study there. And they said that Rhode Island has a ton of swing voters. That means Rhode Island tends to flip, or not tends to flip, but Rhode Island can flip um, a lot sooner than maybe some people would think it would. Um... It just has a ton of swing voters, kind of like New Hampshire or a lot of other, a lot, a, a decent amount of swing states. Um, whereas a state like Georgia and North Carolina, those don't have a ton of swing voters. They just have um, a lot of voters who are kind of already determined in who they're going to vote for. Um, but yeah, so I could see something like this happen. I really don't think Trump could do better than this um, under any circumstance unless somehow he does something really good for one state and the state completely forgives him uh, <laughs> of being a complete narcissistic asshole, which is not going to happen. Let's be honest, guys. So a reasonable prediction, and I'm going to reset this map, is based off of I'm going to show you what my swing state map currently looks like, um, which this uh, will do double duty because tomorrow um, I will be covering uh, the swing states. I believe I lean this. Yeah, I lean that to the Democrats. Uh, oops, that was lean red. This was likely red. This was lean red. Likely, and this was Leans, New Hampshire, Leans, golly, there we go. So this is what my map already looks like, and that should tell you something. Um, but yeah, this is just the baseline. Um, really, Trump's not going to pick up a ton more. But it should generally tell you where I believe certain places will, which places will be competitive. Um, or at least reasonably so. I'm not adding Texas in. I think 2016 was a bit of a fluke, but, you know, depending on the arguments uh, that people make, I may add it. Um, I've actually removed two states. Uh, that would be Washington and Oregon. I don't think they'll be competitive again for a long time, barring any extenuating circumstances. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed and understand this was a bit rambly. Um, anyway, Hope you enjoyed. Have a nice evening. See you tomorrow.